that, like David Goggins, Jocko, all those people, it took them years to get to that point. They didn't just wake up one day and go, that's it. That's a life of work. It's a life of work and that's the life that they've chosen and all the more power to them. Um, it's when we start boasting about, oh, I've been sleeping all in and you know, I've become an entrepreneur. I'm hustling every minute of the day. That's when things go backwards. And then when we start denying fun, that's because they probably find what they do fun anyway. Exactly. This is a big point. I think I, have in my journey through basketball, through getting obsessed with that and trying to take it as far as possible in my life, I was, and I think this is really important in, in one's life to experience, life is supposed to be imbalanced in a lot of ways sometimes. It's not always going to be harmony and balance, especially when you're young. And so I think that's important to experience. So I experienced that and I and I experience it in a way still today where there's a lot of imbalance, where it's just... When, when, I, when you go at something, you attack it fully and wholeheartedly, right? And that was my life for a lot of period of time. And I think that's what your life was, Paul, for a lot of period of time, right? Okay. But now I'm starting to realize, and I realize this through my relationship especially, is, oh, I don't just have to be a slave to my goals and outcomes and habits and ho- Like, I don't just have to be, do that. Like, I can experience and enjoy and take joy and fun out of life too. Like, why not? I want that. I want to live a life that is joy-filled, not just um, success-filled or meaning-filled uh, superficially as well. I-, I want something where I can experience joy, where I can have no guilt about enjoying things that I enjoy, like reading and entertainment. I love movies. They're like drugs for me. Like, take me to new worlds. And like, I love that. Like, I watch silly shit that I laugh at. Like, The Simpsons, I think, is iconic and incredible. Like, yes. things like that. Now I'm at that place now. I feel so liberated, and I'm still able to be successful in my fields that I'm doing at. Because when I'm here, and when you're here, Paul, when you coach, you're on. When you run your business, when you're doing your 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 artificial intelligence, that is laser focus. But when you're doing something else, when I'm enjoying something with my girlfriend uh, like a uh, like a entertainment i'm laser focused on that that is f- i'm fully experiencing it yeah our brain has the our brain has like this unlimited capacity it just doesn't have the unlimited capacity to do the one thing only it needs variation yeah it's like you can easily you can be exhausted people say oh i can't focus anymore i've had a hard day at work that's a lot of crap because as soon as you play a video game after about 10 minutes, you're like this, you're fully engrossed in it. Your brain has the resources to do that. You do, it's just being able to intelligently disperse that over the multiple interests that you have, which makes you a more well-rounded person anyway. And I actually, you've spoken to Lachlan Wilmot before, right? Yes. Yeah. Cause he's, um, well, the podcast, he's, Elfic podcast. Yeah, and he's um, with AA. Mm. Um, he's, I remember him, I remember him when he was my first mentoring student. I heard that, which is actually, I'd love to talk about that, but keep doing what you're saying. He, uh, when he was younger, when he started working, he was very driven. Like 20, it's not often you have like a very young, like 18, 19 year old going, I'm going to work in professional sports. Yeah. Conditioning coach. It's not often. It doesn't happen like that. And he was very driven, like really, really driven, really on the ball. Uh, and after a number of years, I remember seeing him write something in some article because I always follow what he's doing. And he wrote down what's one of the most valuable things that you can learn. And he's like, man, it's learning not just to be a coach the whole time yeah. and not just being obsessed and actually having some interest. And they're like, why? And he's like, because I can now talk to my athletes. I can now actually develop a relationship with my athletes, talk to them about shit like having a girlfriend, having a boyfriend, playing a video game, watching a movie, what's happening in the world. And I get, I'm get i effectively now a better coach because I've got a wider range of experiences to draw from. Because like, you know, me, like I was hyper-focused, like yeah. it sounds like you were basketball. I would be up late studying and learning anatomy and biomechanics, up early at work. Do I study before work, which was insane thinking of it now, I'd go to work, I'd study in breaks or I'd train. It was like seven days a week. That was it. That was the grind. That was it. And I I really enjoyed it. But after a period of time, it was like, cool, friendships, where are they? No, they're not there. Talking to clients about stuff that's not this, when they start talking about their life, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no, I have no idea how to relate to people. And when you're a coach, it's not about, 
as a holistic coach, it's not about holistic, not like saying we have to rake them every day or anything. We have to be able to understand where people are coming from. Just having that ability to see the world from a slightly different perspective, which is follows back to our conversation earlier. It makes you better and more effective in pretty much every area of your life. Yeah, you become a better human. Yes. So now all my relationships with everybody are better, right? I'm less neurotic. I'm I'm more mentally. Uh, I am healthier. But I feel that the neurotic thing. I feel that. You, you still now? I feel like not being as neurotic. Right. So but much it, better. Absolutely. But it's 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 like I think for certain types of people, like it's it lingers, right? It's always a, like a like a I don't know, like a, a line. You gotta just keep at bay from taking you over. Yep, and you need to have self compassion to then go. It's yes. a it's a tool. Like everyone who's been successful, or everyone who's been really driven towards goals, probably had it let take over them at one point. Yes, and they probably had a friend, or hopefully they've had a friend or someone nearby to say, "Dude, it's cool. You can have a nap, or you can go. Let's go have a beer, or whatever yeah. it is." And to bring that, just have a normal conversation about normal shit, and do something that's normal. It's so it's like when you come back to what you're passionate about and what you want to achieve. Exactly like you said, you're like, let's hit this laser. Yeah. Let's nail this shit. And I don't have to get to the point where I destroy my health. It's so ironic that in the health industry, so many of us health professionals, we end up having such poor health because we're trying to help other people's health. We're our worst clients. <laughs> right? And that, yeah. that contradiction led me to stop posting on Strength of Saad, which is my social media page, um, where I did all my health and wellness stuff. Because I'm like, what am I doing? I'm, I'm, I'm a contradiction. Like, I need to transform myself physically, uh, mentally, before I can come back to the world um, and, and talk about these things. I just think we live contradictions all the time like that. Yes, we do. It's just recognizing them and then being mindful enough to then make a better decision next time.